Welcome and good morning to Mike Ferry TV. It is the week of July 27th. I, I know a lot of you, I shouldn't say a lot of you, we had about 4,000, I think probably just a couple over 4,000 people register for the retreat in Las Vegas two weeks ago. We had a wonderful crowd. In fact, it was actually, I will have to say, it was the best crowd we've ever had. Uh, we've been doing retreats for 28 years. By far the best crowd we've ever had. Most engaged, most enthusiastic, most energized, uh, most involved, asked the most questions, participated the most. It was just a great group. I hope you were there. <clears throat> if you weren't, come to the retreat in October in Florida. I had a, a very unusual but a very important little conversation take place during the retreat. Uh, I think it was Thursday afternoon. <clears throat> Just before we started back to work after the break, I had a lady approach me on the stage and probably, I'm going to guesstimate, in her middle 40s, said she had been in real estate five or six years. Mm, very, very moderate success, you know, that's seven to 10 to 12 transactions. And in her marketplace with an average commission check of 4000 she obviously wasn't making a lot of money, but she was creating a revenue stream for herself. And she walked up, and again, I say to you, she had a very concerned look on her face. And I, I, as soon as I saw her, because I had a line of people waiting to talk to me, pulled her aside and I said, uh, what's the problem? She said, can we talk for five minutes? So I said to the rest of the people waiting, give me five minutes. And I walked her off the stage and I said, I have to say to you, with all the people here that are so excited about being here and the smiles on their faces, tell me what you're concerned about. And listen to the question she asked. I, I've quite honestly never, 40 years of doing training, workshops, retreats, etc. I've never been asked this question this way. And she looked at me and she said, can you tell me exactly what my job is as a real estate agent? And it kind of took me off guard. I was a little surprised. I mean, obviously, you know, that's something that she should know the answer to. I should know the answer to. And it should be at the tip of our tongue. So I guess the first question I would ask all of you as real estate professionals, what is your job? Can you define it? Can you take a piece of paper and write down what your job is? So I looked at her and I said, you know, I, I'm going to say something in the next two to three minutes. I'm going to say it very quickly. I have to start the seminar again. So I said, let me tell you what I believe your job is. And what I did um, after the end of that day, I wrote down what I said to her. So I wrote it down for you. And here's what I said to her. Your job, and these are no order of importance, number one is to provide financially for yourself and your family. If you're a single person, and I'm not asking you to tell me, if you're a single person, you have to provide for yourself. If you're providing for a family because you're, say, divorced, you have to provide for your family. I said, so part of your job is to understand that people work to provide. If you had a real job, would you work to provide? The answer is yes. Sometimes people work because they have the luxury of working. They don't need the money, and that's a great thing also. But I said your first job is to provide for yourself and your family. The second, your job is to add to the support of your spouse. I don't want to know if you're married. I don't want to know if you're single. I'm not interested in that. If you're married and your spouse works, and let's say, for example, you have children and you own a home and you have a car and you're trying to run your life, your job as a real estate person is to add financially to that very situation that you're involved in because if you didn't sell real estate and you had to work, you'd go get a job to add to the support for yourself, your family, and your spouse. Then I wrote down for her third, to either list and sell real estate in reasonably good volume. I said the challenge with that is defining good volume. And the defining good volume is based upon your motivation, I think, based on the first two things I said. I said if your spouse makes 100,000 bucks a year and you're working as a real estate agent and adding 40 to 60,000 to it, which really makes your life that much better, congratulations. You're gonna list and sell homes to that level. If you're a sole provider and you need to make 150,000 a year just to make sure you pay your taxes, pay your bills, make your house payment, you're gonna list and sell real estate to that volume. Um, I chatted with a lady yesterday right in my office. It was an interesting conversation. A local Las Vegas agent who's been very successful for a long time who told me point blank the last four years, 
She simply has made a lot of money taking care of herself financially and doesn't have a great desire. So now she's making instead of five or six hundred thousand a year, outstanding, seventy five to one hundred. That's fine. Whatever you want to do. But you're going to do it through listing and selling real estate. So your job is to list and sell real estate. And you're going to do that based upon the amount of money either you need to earn or you want to earn. Then I said, number four, your job is to provide good quality service for all your prospects and all your clients, all of your database, all your referrals, good quality service. So I said to her, that would require, of course, that you define what is good quality service. Can you define what is good quality service? Do you even know what it is? And she kind of nodded her head, so I, I assumed that was a yes. I said, number five, your job is to keep learning everything you can about the real estate business. I, I don't understand why people don't understand how complex this business is. And I'm not talking about taking a listing or making a sale. I'm talking about the complexities of the business, the jargon, the verbiage, the words, the how-tos of you know, putting transactions together, keeping them together, getting them closed. You know, how do you evaluate what a property's price should be? What, how do you make a fair offer to a seller? These are not the skills in terms of sales. These are the fundamentals of operating any kind of a business. You have to know how to run a business. A real estate person is running a business. So you have to keep learning the real estate business. Then I said to her, number six, to keep learning the sales business. And I said to her, congratulations, you're here at the retreat. I'm glad you're here. Um, I, I think if you're not learning how to sell real estate based on this event, there's no hope because I have to tell you, if you were there, it was the best four day event I've ever put on in my entire sales career. And I have to tell you, the response from the audience was the same. Um, the response we've received back from the people that attended has been overwhelming. We'll talk about some of those responses in the next couple of weeks. To keep learning the sales business, are you learning how to sell? And she looked at me and she said, I'm not very good at that. I said, well, then you have to get good because that is your job. If you're an airline pilot for Delta Airlines and you weren't any good, you'd either be taken off the job or taught how to fly a plane. I said, if you're a nurse working in a doctor's office, either you learn the routines or you can't have the job. It's the same thing here. Number seven, your job is to work on achieving the goals you've set. And if you're not willing to work each day, to achieve the goals you've set, you're not doing your job. And then she admitted, which I appreciated, I don't have any goals. I said, well, if success is the progressive realization of a worthwhile goal or objective, which is what success is based on Earl Nightingale's definition, then if you don't have any goals, progressively realizing what you're trying to attain, you can't be a success. I looked at her and I said, don't get mad at me, but..." If you don't have any goals, you can't be a success. All you're going to do is be a survivor in the real estate business. And survivors don't last. You've got to set some goals. Then I said number eight, to be a positive influence on the people around you. That's a hard job in real estate, to be a positive influence on the people around you. If you're a coaching client, we're going to start doing something a lot of fun. We're going to start having probably every month starting in later August, we're going to have one day a month where we have National Positive Thinking Day for our coaching clients, where we're only allowed to think positive for the entire day. No negative thoughts are going to be let in, no negative thoughts part of our, our, our conversations, no negative thoughts to people around us. We're going to try to spend one entire day at least once a month to be the most positive force we can possibly be for ourselves, for our family, for our community, for the office, for our buyers, for our sellers. It's going to be an interesting challenge. So I said, you have to be a positive influence. And then I said, your job number nine, with, with all the stress that goes on in building a business, is to work every day to enjoying the experience. You have to enjoy the experience. And if you can't enjoy the experience, what's the point? Well, I did all of that in about three minutes. And as I was doing it, she started out next to me, and as each point became a little bit more strong, she kept backing away from me. And I kept walking towards her, and I actually for a moment thought she was going to fall off the stage. So I reached out and I said, quit moving back. This is your job. 
I said, you ask me what the job is, I've tried to define it. Now, I'll bet you could help me define this job a lot further than what I've defined it. But see, the challenge in our industry is everybody's afraid to tell people what to do. Everybody's afraid to tell people how to operate. Everybody's afraid to tell them what their job is. And it, you know, I, I had a great conversation a couple days ago with a wonderful lady again here in Las Vegas, an agent, and I said, for me, the industry is going backwards at a pace that's almost hard to believe because the op industry operates from fear. The broker's afraid to tell the manager what to do for fear the manager will quit and steal agents. The manager and broker are afraid to tell the agent what to do for fear the agent will quit and go someplace else. The agent's afraid to tell the seller what to do for fear the seller will list with somebody else. The agent's afraid to tell the buyer what to do for fear the, agent, the buyer will buy from somebody else. We're operating in a fear-based business. Let's turn that around. We're not gonna turn around the industry, you and I, but we can turn you around. And how do we turn ourselves around? By saying to ourselves, we have a job to do. Why don't we do it? Talk to you next week.